Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to those out there. It is the Earth Master here back at it on this wonderful Tuesday. It is about 1226 p.m. here, California time, December 26, 2023. Latest activity shows, uh, looks like some movement up in Alaska. We did see some further deep, super deep activity up here into the area of the Sea of Osk, it looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and check that out real quick, see what we got going on for this super deep earthquake. Actually, it's off the uh, uh, off of that region here, off the coast of Russia, very close to the North Korea area, uh, in Peter the Great Bay. That earthquake coming in, goodness, 519 kilometers deep for that 4.6, uh, that earthquake just about an hour or so ago. Definitely looking at quite a bit of deeper movement taking place here recently in the last couple days, even down south here uh, in the Izu Islands. We did see uh, some deeper activity yesterday that went into the subduction zone here of the Izu Trench. And if we go back the last couple days, there's been a, a few deeper earthquakes in the region. That obviously is a little concerning because uh, most of the time that deeper, uh, larger movement like that does add further strain building up here across the subduction zone level itself. We'll keep an eye on that uh, region here of the Kuro Kamachaka into the Japan Trench uh, for some uh, further movement. It's been awfully quiet, but that deeper activity uh, just gives us a good indicator of uh, some uh, serious strain building up out there. All right, uh, across the rest of the world here, see what we got down in New Zealand. Looks like a couple earthquakes along the Kermadec Trench, some uh, threes and maybe even a four in there or so, some deeper activity. Still lacking activity here across Papua New Guinea, eastward, uh, across this region, the Solomon Islands, down into Vanuatu area. So things are remaining quiet there for now. Looks like we did have 5.1, though, here in, in the area of Papua New Guinea. Uh, that earthquake coming in early this morning, it looks like, about 80 kilometers deep uh, across this plate boundary here. But keep an eye on this zone right here. It's been awfully quiet here recently. Uh, looking at the rest of the globe, still showing some clustering going on about the Philippines southward into the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, there's that deeper movement up north across the rest of the globe here. Shows uh, some twos and threes out there across the Mediterranean. And I'm sure there's uh, quite a bit of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, quite a bit of other activity out there across the region of the globe. But this is just a Mediterranean uh, earthquake activity. From the EMSC, I don't have all the agencies up here on the globe, so there's always going to be some twos and threes out there across any uh, plate boundary that you look at. But then the globe would be completely cluttered, and we wouldn't know what's going on out there. So I kind of keep it at the minimal uh, in terms of that uh, activity. Uh, down south, another earthquake into the South Sandwich Trench, it looks like, overnight. Uh, pretty, uh, well, it's not too deep, but it is at the northern edge here of the subduction zone 5.0 125 kilometers deep now over the past seven days or so we have seen a handful of earthquakes out here up and down the region kind of equaling things out here across the subduction zone um, of course this area a couple years ago did see an 8.1 earthquake out here but you know it's i don't know if you want to call that aftershock activity or just continuing at uh, uh continuing activity in the region uh, just always seems to get uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity down here. Last week has uh, definitely shown that. Today, 5.0, 125 kilometers deep. So we're building some further strain across the region. Uh, areas of the Puerto Rico Trench and the Dominican Republic. Last night, seen a 5.3 coming in up here in this little swarming area that we've been kind of watching. A uh, handful of earthquakes since then, overnight, uh, mostly across the area north here, Puerto Rico. Uh, still pretty close here to the Puerto Rico Trench. Got to keep an eye on this area. It's been showing some elevated movement uh, across the region. The latest earthquake here, 4.5 into the Venezuela area. About 18 kilometers deep or so on the southern end of that Caribbean plate. Uh, one little earthquake out here in Texas, near Snyder, Texas. I already know what's out there. 2.9. Quite a bit of oil fields out there across the Snyder, Texas area. As you can see here on the map, looks like maybe some older operations out here that have been erased off of the land. Uh, but this earthquake occurring, it looks like uh, in a field, but there does appear to be some <clears throat> some type of tanks or something going on out there. Uh, no doubt uh, some oil pumping operations 
in the vicinity nearby. Let's back out of here real quick. Pecos, Texas, still seeing some movement out there as well. Uh, let's look at the West Coast, see if anything's going on up here. You've got one earthquake outside of Mount Rainier. It's going to be a 0.7 earthquake. And not seeing anything major going on up here uh, for now. Not even uh, anything of concern. A couple threes out there off the coast of Oregon from yesterday and today. Um, this activity here in Northern California from yesterday. A little bit of movement at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, let's see anything else going on here. One little earthquake across Lake Almanor. 2.4 from early this morning. The rest of the coast... Or rest of California here, I should say, it looks uh, about normal in terms of uh, daily earthquake activity. A little swarm going on here near the Little Lake area in the Coso uh, Basin region. A lot of uh, older volcanic activity out here. Uh, for now, looks like uh, I did have a 3.0 earlier this morning and a couple other twos and ones scattered out there across that area. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. And uh, Alaska area looks about normal for any given day. Twos and threes uh, appear to be the magic number, along with uh, quite a few microquakes out there. Uh, let me double check Yellowstone here real quick and see what we got going on here. <clears throat> Nothing on the map, but that doesn't mean anything uh, because a lot of times we'll see swarming happen out here with no uh, indication of it on the USGS map. A couple earthquakes here in the last... Um, uh -oh, earlier this morning it looks like some very small spikes these events up here appear to be localized to the area i don't know if they are maybe some geyser activity uh this event right here looks a little odd right if i wouldn't know better if i didn't know better i would think that was l maybe lava or not lava but magma brewing down below but i'm not seeing anything showing up here uh, locally at other seismograph stations not even a hint of it so if this was legit activity say magma movement or fluid movement underneath the ground uh, we would see it nearby and I'm really not seeing any signs of it anywhere um, across any other seismograph station so whatever it is uh, appears to be uh, local here very local to the seismograph station I don't know if there's a generator running for a couple hours there or what but uh, definitely hard to say uh, and this here kind of looks like I don't know maybe an it almost looks like some type of uh, instrument adjustment uh, reamplification for the uh, amount of sensitivity that that seismograph station picks up again if this was magma movement on a scale, we, we would definitely see this show up here across the area, along with earthquake activity. But small earthquakes, uh, interference, I believe, from some seismographs or from something going on up there. I don't know what it is. Only the folks that are around the Mary Lake area, maybe the geologists know what that noise is. But it uh, doesn't look like it's uh, volcanic. All right, move on. Uh, through that from that area Let's see what else we got going on here across the globe Hawaii is still continuing to see some earthquake activity out here across Pahala closer to the Loihi Seamount got one earthquake way up here in the uh, well outside Mauna Kea region 2.2 10 kilometers deep uh, far as the volcanic activity there across Kilauea volcano well, it's not erupting, but uh, I'm still looking at the inflation data here. Uh, going up and up and up. Uh, still at the highest level of, of inflation since 2018. And the highest level compared to previous inflation events here. Uh, and we can go back the last couple months here as well and see that each step is above the other. Continuing to go up and up and up in terms of the inflation there around the summit region. Uh, and again, earthquake activity, very minimal. Really not seeing a whole lot of activity there on the USGS map. This one's showing nothing, but it looks like it may be off uh, in terms of sensitivity. Uh, this activity, definitely earth, uh, earthquake movement. Uh, but it kind of looks like fluid activity going on here below the surface as well. Um, let me check something out. So check something out here. That's going to be that station. 
see that activity also showing up on this seismograph station so kind of what i was pointing at up there at yellowstone how if we do see something like this then we know it's uh, some type of fluid movement if it's showing up on multiple stations like it is here across the kilauea volcano over here and also uh, on this well, not that seismograph station but uh i think it was this one yeah this one as well so uh, it does look like some magma movement on the move out there. That does look like fluid movement. Uh, let's see what the USGS has to say about that. If they put out an update today. Uh, their update is put out. Uh, the volcano currently is not erupting. And uh, unrest may be uh, fluctuating there due to the input of magma in the area. And of course, eruptive activity there at the Kilauea volcano could occur in the near future with little or no warning. Um, let's see, there is currently no signs of an imminent eruption at Kilauea, but the volcano summit region remains unsettled with a high level of inflation and continued seismic activity. Uh, the onsets of previous summit eruptions have been marked by strong swarms of earthquakes, caused by magma moving towards the surface one to two hours before the appearance of lava. Uh, this type of earthquake activity is not being detected at the time, at this time. So, uh, but definitely looks like some type of movement going on there in the uh, seismograph stations there across the Kilauea volcano. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on any changes. But as they mentioned, there'll be uh, definitely some strong indications of where the fissure activity could be opening up. Um, uh, you know, along with some earthquake swarming out there in certain regions, I'm still kind of leaning towards areas south here of the of the uh, summit region. All right, let's see what else we got here across this region uh, of this beautiful planet we live on. Hopefully, everyone survived the the holidays. A little crazy sometimes, but uh, it's always good to spend some time with uh, families. Uh, let's see. Really not seeing anything major out of the norm here. All right, uh, let's go check out the... I'm going to check out GeoNet servers here real quick down in New Zealand just to make sure that we're not missing anything. Otherwise, it'd definitely be showing up here if that was the case. But last uh, two days ago, 2.3. Earthquake drums obviously, obviously will give us a good indicator of anything brewing out here in terms of swarms or activity that has been missed 12 hours ago looks like some of that activity here south island area but that, i think that was a three-pointer not seeing anything major going on there across the area for now the solarham.net site there's that coronal hole number 86 the most recent image here does show it a little bit closer uh, getting closer here to the earth directed view We'll watch that though in the coming days could pick up a little bit of high speed solar wind stream from that coronal hole uh, and that could amplify the aurora conditions here uh, as we head into maybe the weekend or early next week uh, let's see no major flaring has been produced flaring activity has been uh, low key so to speak over the last couple days 95 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 20 x flare around five percent chance or so uh, but these uh, sunspot regions, look at that. Hold on a second. Let's go back here. This was, uh, I think, 1226 last night, if I remember right. This is last night's image. This is most recent. There was a new sunspot here developing, right? It was marked up here on the solar ham site. Look at it today. Uh, it just completely has diminished here, uh, along with other sunspot regions out here that have been facing the Earth. So. Uh, really not seeing any potential of any type of flaring, maybe some sea flare activity, but all these sunspots are decaying and relatively stable in their current magnetic uh, conditions out here. Uh, and far as anything coming around the bend, well, not really seeing any major bright features out here. That looks a little dull in the image here. Not for sure what's going on. Doesn't look right. Kind of looks a little fuzzy on that one, but... Uh, yeah, we'll just kind of watch and wait and see what happens. Right now, I think our only hope of any space weather activity is going to be this coronal hole that we'll watch here in the coming days. See if it uh, amplifies a little bit of conditions out there in the Aurora department. As far as weather activity here on the ground, 
Well, looks like thunderstorm activity out here across a good portion of the east. Nothing in terms of severe potential. Less than 2% across all areas. And that is due to a low pressure system here. Spinning up some moisture there across the uh, eastern uh, portion of the country. Wrapping back around this is some colder air bringing some snow into Nebraska, South Dakota area. Um, giving a little taste of winter out there. West Coast, got a storm knocking on our door here come Wednesday. Um, and that's going to bring a little bit of rainfall um, over the end of the weekend and into, or the week into the weekend. Uh, we got an another storm system here around Saturday bringing some further rainfall in. Uh, looks like that may stick around a little bit and open the storm door, so to speak. Crazy how quick these things change, though. Uh, these models crazy because i remember just uh a couple well maybe last night or the night before i can't remember exactly when it showed some pretty strong storms hit in southern california but that doesn't appear to be the case now looks like that's just going to stick up north to northern california and um i guess we'll see how this plays out either way i uh, hope everyone enjoys the day it is uh uh, it's it's kind of quiet out there, right? I, I know last night we didn't see a whole lot of activity stirring up out here across the Western Pacific. Most of the movement that, that uh, did stir up overnight and this morning uh, is uh, some deeper activity. So watch these zones today. Deeper activity normally strains uh, towards the surface areas upstream, so to speak. So we'll continue to watch areas out here for some movement. Seismograph stations out here look pretty calm right now. The uh, Iceland station, there's, again, there's not a whole lot of movement there across the Iceland area. Let me cover that here real quick. I did have it pulled up first, but their update was put out about four days ago. So nothing new has gone on here. Uh, otherwise, they would have put out an update by now. And their earthquake activity up here, uh, about 35 earthquakes in total across the area. And uh, still seeing some movement here. Around the Grindavik area, Hagafell, Slingarfell region here. Uh, but nothing key that would indicate, you know, the potential of some new fissure activity opening up. The uh, GPS stations out here across the area still continue to show uh, vertical uplift across the Savart Singhi area where it has been here pretty nicely since uh, uh, the end of October. This chart right here, this is a little drop. Uh, when the eruption uh, happened there, north of Green, uh, northeast of Grindavik, a short-term eruption, but it did spew out quite a bit of uh, lava, magma fr uh, from below, and then uh, create that lava field out there. But uh, we're going back up, so again, I don't think we're over yet. We'll continue to watch that and see how things play out. In the meantime, have yourself a good day, folks. We'll be back out here a little bit later this evening unless something major happens. Take care and stay safe out there.